All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. On this page of notes, we're going to dive into characteristics of polynomial functions. And this, these notes have been laid out so that you could actually follow the prompts and see what you can fill out and remember from your Algebra 2 courses, or you can watch it straight through as you normally would. So diving into our explanation here, our <coughs> first one is identifying polynomial functions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify our polynomial functions, and there are two main characteristics. The first one is that all the exponents are non-negative integers. Now, what is that really telling us? It's telling us that the exponents are positive whole numbers. Okay. The next thing is that we can only add and subtract our terms. So only addition and subtraction of the terms um, are allowed. So we can't multiply the terms in anywhere in our uh, problem or divide them. So if we want to look at this uh, to the left down here, it says look at the examples and counterexamples, and we're going to spend some time looking at what makes them polynomials or what makes them not polynomials. So all the ones here on the left are in fact polynomial functions, and we want to identify the degree. This is actually going to be our step two here. So we're going to do one and two simultaneously. So step two says the degree of the polynomial function, and the degree is simply the highest exponent, understanding that it may or may not have been written in descending order. So our four examples, okay, we can identify those degrees. Our first degree here is actually a zero. Now, sometimes that confuses students because what we need to remember is that there's actually an x to the zero here that, of course, simplifies to a one, so I don't need to include it. My degree on the next one is that exponent of a three. So that's going to be a degree of three. The leading coefficient doesn't matter at all. So my, co my degree is three. My degree was zero. Continuing on. I find my highest exponents, and identifying the, the degree is very simple. So my degree is 4, and my degree is 10. Now, being able to find the degree is going to help us answer other questions later, so it actually is a really important idea. Now, we've got some counterexamples, so we want to understand why are these not um, polynomials. So I'm going to just highlight what makes them not polynomials, and then we'll write it out in words. So right there, that makes it that one, that one, and that one. Now, identifying these in words, what we can see is that we have a variable exponent. That's how we would describe this in words. So having a variable in the exponent makes this not a polynomial function. On our next one, we have a variable under a root. This actually can be seen um, similarly. We could rewrite this, and we could see this as an x to the 1 half, which is the, um, a problem that we'll see in the problem right below us, is that we have a fractional exponent. So there's kind of two ways that you can see that one, so a fractional exponent is another problem. And our last one would be a variable in the denominator understanding that that can be rewritten as an x to the negative 1 and our definition from the beginning said that our exponents needed to be positive whole numbers. Alright, so we've actually done steps 1 and 2. Uh, understanding what makes them a polynomial function and identifying the degrees of them. So now we can do a quick little summary about understanding solutions, zeros, and roots. And it's important to understand that all of these words are equivalent to us. So the zeros of a polynomial function are also called roots or solutions. And if our function has a degree of n, so a degree n, remember we found those degrees up in step one and step two, then it will have n solutions. 
So our example up above that had a degree of 10, there should actually be 10 solutions to that problem. Now the zeros for the function are any value of x such that f of x will equal zero. In other words, if I plug that value into the function, I would get zero as my result. When I write those values in the form x minus k, or x minus whatever it happens to be, then we call them factors. And if they are written as a nice ordered pair, understanding that the y-coordinate, of course, was zero, then we call them x-intercepts. Now, it's important to understand that if they are real numbers, they can be plotted on the x-axis, and we call them the intercepts. If they're not real numbers, okay, if they're not real numbers, we are not typically going to write them as factors or as x-intercepts. Only when they're real numbers will we write them as the factors in the x-intercepts. If they're imaginary numbers, they cannot be plotted on the x-axis or anywhere on our standard coordinate plane. So we don't actually even worry about them at that point. They're solutions, they're certainly roots, uh, they're zeros, but we won't write them as factors or intercepts because they can't be plotted.